Fujitsu is an international household name for many people around the world. They make everything from server computers to POS machines and even escalators. So it wouldn't be too surprising to know that they make e-paper devices as well. The first Quaderno came out in 2019 as a white label to the Sony DPT. They were pretty successful seeing that Sony had already pulled out of the reader market and subsequently were pulling all of their digital paper services out of the US and Japan respectively. Earlier on this year at a trade show in Tokyo, Japan, we actually saw the device that was dubbed the Digital Paper 2.0 or Second Generation. They had told us that the technology is up for grabs that anyone who wants it. Two units were available, the DPT 2.0 and the DPT Color, and it looks like Fujitsu nabbed themselves the Second Generation Digital Paper. As Lymphony is the OEM or Original Equipment Manufacturer, that means companies like QuirkLogic, Sony, Fujitsu, can buy these shells and make it their own. Who's gonna pick up the color DPT? We honestly have no idea, but for now, let's look at the Quaderno second generation. The Fujitsu Quaderno, one of a kind. Existing alongside tablet powerhouses with e-paper screens, the Quaderno approaches things professionally, simplistically, and beautifully. Its design is easy to look at, effective, and very fitting with the DPT legacy. It's also the first device in the world to use the new e-ink Carta 1250 e-paper display. This version has a thinner film, faster ink, and enables faster page turns, along with less latency while using a stylus. Interestingly enough, even in the year 2021, they still haven't sold out. They're still using a plastic screen as opposed to a glass screen, which gives it some of the best writing feel in the industry. And of course, there are improvements over the previous generation. A new USB-C port gives you faster data communication. A thinner and lighter body makes it easier to hold. A faster processor makes everything, well, faster. And most notably, a brand new EMR layer to allow you to use any stylus on the market. Let's take a peek at the stylus. This one actually is the exact same as the Onyx, the Boyu, and the Jezatech, and many other manufacturers. They all use this stylus. This one is a little bit different in that it is a stone gray with a little bit of bronze flake in it. It is very subtle and it looks great. It also has a button on the side and the back, and this one actually can be mapped using the settings on the device itself. Under system settings below pen calibration you have a couple things you can do with the pen. You can change the colors of the pen. Now this doesn't show up on the screen and that is because this is not a color device but you can change it from toggling between red and black or blue and red like the traditional first generation. Pen function settings is where you're going to find the mapping. What that means is you can actually assign the side button and the back, which is the tail switch, AKA the eraser, to do different things. We like to keep it on highlighter and eraser, but you can do anything. For example, if you want the back of the pen to do something else, simply click here and you can toggle it between red, highlighter area selection, zoom in, or disable. And you just select one and it's automatically calibrated to the pen itself. You can do the same with the side button, click that, and you can choose eraser, pen, etc. There is no other device that currently allows you to map buttons on the pen that requires no charging. You can pause the video at any point in time if you want to read what's on the screen, but you have limit editing annotations. Note template, you can select a template every time you create a note or just you can select the template from the very beginning and every page in that note will have the same one. Screen lock. You can use NFC card on the top right corner to unlock the device. Fujitsu has always been about device security. Auto sleep. 60 minutes 
and basically anything in between. You can choose any interval as well. It's not just tens or fives. You can choose 43 or 12 or whatever you'd like. Date and time. Control server settings. This one is very technical and we may or may not get into this in a future video, but it's not too crucial in the generic review video. You can also swipe away everything on the device and delete all documents or initialize device, which not only deletes all the documents in the hard drive or the storage, it goes back to the very beginning, in which case you have to calibrate everything. Much like the first generation, there is no home screen. Your home screen is a list of everything up above. You have return to document, Find documents on the list, documents and folders, schedule, create note, import from ScanSnap, this is a proprietary Fujitsu scanner, software update and settings. On Fujitsu's website, you can download tons of different schedulers, but why this is important, it's because it's not just a PDF, it's catered to this device. For example, if I draw on the screen, I'm drawing over the entire thing, but if I use my finger, it isolates individual elements down to the month, and even the day to go deeper into those respective sections. From there, I can continue my notes, I can go back, I can go on the sidebar, and I can interact with the unit with both the capacitive of my fingertip and the pen itself in different ways. And yes, the highlighter works on basically anything you sideload into the unit, whether it's the scheduler or the calendar or anything it can isolate on the screen that is to be considered text. We agree it is a little bit overkill to read manga on a 13.3 inch, but it looks exquisite, especially because this is using the new Carta 1250 technology and this is the first unit in the world to be using this. Everything is super vivid, super clean, there's no fuzziness on any of the lines. This is probably the best looking black and white e-paper screen we have seen to date in terms of its contrast, vividness, and overall vibrancy of the blacks and whites. It's fantastic to look at. Standard PDF magazines look great as well. Page turns have drastically been upgraded over the previous generation for a couple reasons. The new Carta screen enables just inherently faster screen refreshes with no staining in between. Yes, it does flash every time, but you can see that staining is an absolute minimum. There's almost no ghosting from the previous image. And the device itself is sped up from the previous generation. You can pinch and zoom. Now there's no mini map, however, they do give you a percentage on the top left corner. So it's a little bit of give and take. This is where you can do your highlighting on any text elements and you can actually highlight over your highlight up to 11 times and that respective highlight will just get darker and darker. It will never get to a point where you can't see the text anymore, but it does go into different levels of grayscale. You can delete your highlights as well by using the eraser and then everything is gone. So that's super convenient. If you're skipping ahead in this video, an absolute huge advantage over the previous gen is that not only can you use the stock pen that comes with it, but you can use any pen, the Reink Stone, the Remarkable 2, the Lamy pen, or even the Big Me pen. It will work with pretty much any EMR slash Wacom enabled pen, the Mitsubishi, the Stadler, the X-Pen, the iReader Smart, anything on the market. So it certainly opens you up from using the previous Sony $100 replacement pen that you need to charge into using anything on the market. Tapping the top palette, you can see it is heavily expanded over the previous generation, as well as you have a lot more line thicknesses, eraser thicknesses, two color toggles, which you could map on the pen, a highlighter, an eraser, and the pen itself. Once you've made notes in your notebook, you can click on the top right corner and a bunch of stuff shows up here. You can choose your annotations list and it will basically show you everything you've taken notes of and it will outline everything you've taken with the pen. Display documents side by side or split screen is very fitting on a 13.3, both literally and figuratively. What this actually does is it doesn't just duplicate what you're looking at. It 
actually splits the entire UI into two separate elements. For example, I can click on the drop down here and I can choose anything I want. So I can go to the baseball PDF we use as testing purposes and it's gone to exactly where I was. I can go over here and look at the manga we just showed you a little while back and it will open that. And respectively on each side, I can take my own notes anytime I want on both sides. And this time, between both of these, I don't actually have to activate it in order to start writing notes. It's so much quicker that I can just take notes like that and it doesn't cross over. But then you can go like that and it won't cross over the other side. So this is some fine tuning and all the little things they've fixed between the first gen and this one that really makes this shine. The Quaderno second generation is leaps and bounds above the first one. It's advanced in many different ways and it feels very up to date and fitting into the DPT legacy that started it all. If you want to buy this, it is available on our website shipping internationally and for a goodie reader review of the Quaderno, this is Peter.